hello students welcome to lecture 2 on vectors it's a continuation of the previous video we made on lecture 1 so today we want to discuss more about on components of a vector so let's start with the components components of a vector vector component we can express that by drawing the cartesian plane the x the z you can call this y and this x so that we begin with the, the rectangular coordinates of a vector let's say this is vector a1 rectangular coordinate of a1 along the direction i and the rectangular coordinate of a2 which is parallel to the y-axis along the direction of j so this is a2 and we have the rectangular coordinate of the vector which is parallel to which is parallel to z and this is called a3 along the k direction so if o is our origin point then we can have the vector a because it started from zero origin zero then it moved to this length in the direction of i length of a1 then from a1 it moves it continues to a2 in the direction of j then from a2 it continues to a3 in the direction of k so then the vector of concern is the vector joining the origin to this point of a3 and this is what we call vector a just as we said in our previous video that vectors are denoted by bold letters so in short we can express a is equal to a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 k and how do we get the sum of the resultant vectors so the magnitude 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 of a is given as a bar so a magnitude is the same as taking the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared so then we notice that we have position vectors the i j and the k so in this sense there are unit vectors which give us the directions along the x the y and the z axis so if we have a vector position or radius vector r so we have a vector radius radius vector radius vector r from origin from origin o to a point to point x y z then we can say that r is expressed as x in the direction of i plus y in the direction of j plus z along k and the magnitude of r is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared 
Okay, now let's discuss what is called the dot or scalar product. Dot or scalar product. If you have two vectors, say vector A and vector B, then the dot product between these two vectors is that we have a dot b is equal to the magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b and taking the cosine of the angle between them and this angle ranges from 0 to pi now if a if a and b are non zero vectors they are non zero vectors if a and b are non zero vectors then the dot of vector a to that of b will be equal to zero under one condition that is if and only if a and b are perpendicular to each other to mean they are orthogonal since we've said that from here that a dot b is magnitude of a times magnitude of b times the cosine of theta and perpendicular means 90 degrees so if we replace this theta with 90 the cosine of 90 is giving us zero so that is why if we multiply the magnitude of a and magnitude of b with that of magnitude of zero with that of zero the resultant product becomes zero okay so we can take an example example so physically we can have a is equal to 2i it moves two units along the i direction then it again moves some three units along the j direction and some four units along the k direction then vector b moves one direction in the i and we add with three direction in the j and no direction in the k so if we are asked to calculate the dot product of this a and b then we take we can write this in vector form as 2 3 and 4 and this of b as 1 3 and 0 so a dot b is the same as having 2 3 4 we are dotting by 1 3 0 so this is the same as taking 2 times 1 2 times 1 we add to 3 times 3 we add to 4 times 0 and this is 2 plus 9 plus 0 which is equal to 11 okay so in the previous video we learned about vector laws and the vector laws we said that the first law we have commutative law also the dot product uh, assume some of the laws of vectors like if we have a dot b this is equal to b dot a is equal to b dot a and this law is called commutative commutative law for the dot product also we have distributive law the second law 
is distributive that is if we have a the dot of b plus c is equal to a dot b plus a dot c and this we call distributive distributive law if we multiply a scalar we have a scalar m we are dotting with uh, vector a dot b sorry here we multiply so if we multiply this the same as scalar m multiplied by vector a we dot and the result we can dot with b or we can express this as vector a dot by scalar m times b or this can also be expressed as a dot b times the scalar m okay so this bring us to the end of the dot product students uh, i welcome you next to lecture three where we will begin uh, cross product thank you for listening and uh, practicing let's meet in the next class